Welcome to Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for this Monday, April 9th, 2012. We begin in the world of biotechnology. A strain of wheat genetically engineered with a peppermint gene is being tested in the UK. This peppermint gene isn't about giving wheat flavor, but producing a pheromone signal undetectable by humans. The notorious pest aphids, on the other hand, can detect it. It's the signal they use to warn of an attack from predators. The hope is that, if this works, wheat growers could cut down or even eliminate pesticides. Naturally, protesters against GM foods have come out against this, pointing out that the aphids may adapt quickly. While it's certainly possible the aphids could start ignoring the chemical signal, it doesn't just repel them. This pheromone also attracts parasitic wasps, which are one of the aphids' main predators. And the project is different from other similar GM foods in that the goal is repelling pests rather than killing them. For some opinion, this method certainly seems like a step in the right direction for a greater acceptance of GM crops. But again, this is a test. Eight small plots of wheat are being grown at the Rothamsted Research Agricultural Institute in Hertford Shire, where they'll be observed over the summer to see if the gene modification performs as expected. And from the world of nanotechnology, researchers from the University of Florida have developed a new kind of nanotube with some interesting properties. As you've probably heard from Brainstorm and other sources, carbon nanotubes are pretty amazing, with useful mechanical, electrical, and optical properties. However, one crucial application where they've somewhat fallen short is the delivery of cancer-fighting drugs. The idea is for the nanotubes to contain cancer-fighting drugs and deliver them right to the tumor. Unfortunately, carbon nanotubes are expensive to produce and have certain toxic side effects inside the human body. This is where lignin comes in. It's a compound found in plant cells. When bioethanol is produced by the fermenting of plant matter, lignin is a primary byproduct. Refineries could process this lignin into nanotubes to serve as a drug delivery mechanism, most likely better than carbon. Not only would it be cheaper, but lignin nanotubes are flexible and biodegradable, which should avoid the toxicity associated with carbon. This isn't just good for medicine. By selling off this lignin, it'll offset the cost of bioethanol production, making it cheaper and more competitive with other fuels. Our final story is a quick update from the world of neuroscience. A group at MIT has been experimenting with mice to try and stimulate memory recall. To do this, they used the technique known as optogenetics, which we've discussed on Brainstorm before. But for a quick review, optogenetics is the modification of specific cells, generally neurons, to become light sensitive. For experiments with memory, the scientists focused on the brain region called the hippocampus, modifying a few neurons in the hippocampus to be light sensitive and then giving the mouse a new memory. They put the mouse into a distinct environment where it received a mild floor shock, provoking the standard fear reaction of freezing in place, and soon it associated that environment with the shock. After which, they put the mouse in a different environment and shined the light on a few neurons involved with the memory. Sure enough, the mouse froze in place as if being shocked, suggesting the light triggered the whole memory. Obviously, this is a long way from any kind of human applications, but demonstrates the usefulness of optogenetics as a tool for discovery. Well, hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please consider subscribing and be sure to check the links in the video description.